Your ego, what you mean by I in the ordinary way, is your conception of yourself. It is, as it were, the symbol for your actual living organism. And the one is not the other. And they belong to quite different orders of reality. The organism, as what I will for the moment call a physical reality, is of course a process. It is an energy system. It can do something. But the ego is a symbol and is not an energy system and cannot do anything. Just as you cannot tie up a parcel with the equator. The equator is an imaginary line, very useful for purposes of navigation, but not, must not be confused with a physical reality. So in just the same way, the ego, the concept of I, which is given a name, John Doe, Alan Watts, Mary Smith, or whatever it happens to be, is, is a concept. It's a method of tagging people. But it isn't real. Just as you cannot strangle someone with your telephone number. <laughs> but it doesn't deny the usefulness of a telephone number. Now, how do you get this? How does it arise in anybody's individual life? I've traced the, uh, the, the arising of it from the point of view of civilization as a whole, pointing out that when man developed symbolic systems, uh, and they worked so well for him that he began to confuse the symbols with the reality. But now what about in, in, in one's personal life? Well, you see, when you're a little child, all your society around you, your parents, your teachers, your peers, are telling you who you are. It's very important to tag people. We get disconcerted by a person who doesn't have a tag. If I can't make out whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, why well, you must be a communist. <laughs> I feel safe with you if I know you're a Republican or a Democrat. Because then I know what, you, what you're going to think about almost anything. You know, uh, you can always tell somebody says, well, I'm a bircher or I'm a uh, communist or whatever he says. You can predict what he will think about almost any subject. That means he's stupid. Because anybody whose thinking is completely predictable is unintelligent. Because unadaptable to surprising situations. He won't know what to do about that. doesn't say in the book what I'm supposed to think about that. Party line doesn't tell me. But we like to have people safely labeled in that way. And so it isn't only matters of political difference, but also religious and also character types. We've read novels for so long that we believe characters should be consistent. There always are in novels, except in the new anti-novels. <laughs> so that people aren't consistent at all. <laughs> but they're supposed to be. And they're made to feel guilty if they're not. So what you learn to do in your education <coughs> is to act a social role that is acceptable. You have several to choose from. I mean, with, with men, you can be the strong, silent type. You can be the intellectual, studious type. You can be the clown type. You can be a standard drunk. Uh, there are all sorts of more or less predictable roles that you can act in life and that you will get away with. So when, as a child, you one day met a child that you admired very much and you came home imitating that child's mannerisms, you bugged your mother because she didn't know who you were. So Johnny, that's not you, that's Peter. <laughs> and made you feel guilty about that. But then you see what they do to you. The, the, I've just explained the system of social brainwashing. They say, now you, Johnny, are a person. A real person. At least, you've got to try to be. And that means that you're a free agent. You're responsible. 
And you can be praised for the good things you do and blamed for the bad things you do. Because you're independent, you're free, you're separate. <laughs> now, the difficulty for a child is, little child especially, is it has no way of criticizing this information. Social pressure is irresistible. Everybody tells Johnny he's a free agent. So he believes he is. Why? Because he can't help it. See the paradox? He is compelled to be free. <laughs> then he's further told. Now, we, we, want, we want free conduct out of you. Uh, we want you to love us. Not, of course, because we say so, but because you really want to. <laughs> in other words, you are required to behave in such a way that will be acceptable only if you do it voluntarily. <laughs> now, no wonder everybody feels mixed up. Because we spend the rest of our lives trying to resolve that paradox. Well, there's the root of the matter, you see. That uh, we have this confusion between our symbolic personality on the one hand and our living organism on the other. And it's the living organism that's real. 